in today's lesson, which is titled, For It Is Better to Marry, For It Is Better to Marry, we will examine how God wants us to conduct ourselves. And we're going to start today's lesson in 1 Corinthians chapter 7. Because the Lord has a problem with whoremongers and adulterers. He has a problem with these kind of people. And some people are whoremongers and don't even know it. But in today's lesson, we will read God's view on these matters. It won't be mine. It will be his view on them. Then each person can choose whether or not they want salvation or whether or not they want to burn for some few moments of pleasure. And the Lord told us in Deuteronomy chapter 30, he put life and death on the table and he's telling us to choose which one we want. So now, 1 Corinthians, my brother, chapter 7. And let's start at verse 32. 1 Corinthians 7 and 32. 7 and 32, my brother. Go ahead and read. But I would have you without carefulness. He that is unmarried, cared for the things that belong to the Lord. Now, Paul is telling you flat out. See, when you're not married and you don't have a family and a spouse to worry about, then you can concern yourself primarily with what the Lord wants you to do. But go ahead and read. How he may please the Lord. Yes. But he that is married. However, for the one that is married, go ahead. Care it for the things that are of the world. Uh-huh. How he may please his wife. Because if you have a wife, you have to please. If you have a husband, you have to please him. So that marriage brings about some other responsibilities to you. Go ahead and read. There is difference also between a wife and a virgin. Uh-huh. The unmarried woman cared for the things of the Lord. Again, he's just repeating himself. If you don't have a spouse, then your number one priority can be serving God. Go ahead and read. That she may be holy, mm -hmm. both in body and in spirit. Go ahead. But she that is married cared for the things of the world. How she may please her husband. Yes, go ahead. And this I speak for your own profit. Mm -hmm. Not that I may cast a snare upon you, mm -hmm. but for that which is comely. Mm -hmm. And that she may attend upon the Lord without distraction. Yes, so now if you do want to go and be with somebody, he's got some words for you. Back up, my brother, to that verse 8. Verse 8, go ahead and read. I say, therefore, to the unmarried and widows, uh -huh. it is good for them if they abide even as I. So now Paul is telling you it's a good thing if you can live like he's living without a spouse. That way you can be 100% about taking care of God's business. Go ahead and read. But if they cannot contain. However, but if you cannot contain yourself, go ahead. Let them marry. Let them marry. For it is better to marry. Than to burn. So he letting you know flat out if you can't contain yourself and you got to go be with somebody, then you better go off, go on and marry that person. So now let's go to our next place in Exodus 22, because some people, for some reason, they think that just laying with somebody make that person your spouse. The Bible doesn't say that. But you have some brothers going around saying it and some sisters thinking that just because you playing house with somebody that's your spouse let's see if that's the case exodus 22 and 16 go ahead and read and if a man entice a maid that is not betrothed if a brother entices a sister that doesn't belong to anybody else go ahead and read and lie with her uh-huh he shall surely endow her to be his wife wait a minute does that make her his wife brother todd no sir it says the man has something else to do once he lay with that sister. And the Lord is expecting you to take some steps to make that woman your wife. Which tells us that on the flip side, sisters got something to do too. Well, maybe she, be, she should do more of hers in the beginning. Before she lay down with him, she should be trying to vet that brother. Investigate him. Collect some data on the brother. But a lot of times people do things backwards that we're going to see today that the, the right forward way to do them. Some people do them backwards. They lay with somebody. Then they see if the person want to be with them. You know what I'm saying? You should find that out first. They might want a one night stand with you. But anyway, let's move on. Let's go to Romans chapter eight. Romans eight. Let's go back to Paul. 
Because he said, hey, it's better that you go ahead and marry him than to burn. Romans 8, let's start at that first verse, brother, then we're just going to skip a little bit. Romans 8, verse 1. Romans chapter 8 and verse 1. Go ahead and read. There is therefore now no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus. And, and guess what? That is the truth. People will read that and they'll quote that and stop right there. But go ahead and read. Who walk not after the flesh. Who walk not after what? After the flesh. Go ahead. But after the spirit. See, you can't just answer to your flesh and think you walking after the Lord. You have to walk after the spirit, which is this word of God. But too many of us answer to what our flesh feel like doing. That's what gets us in trouble, my brother. Now skip down to verse 5 and continue. For they that are after the flesh uh -huh. do mind the things of the flesh. Go ahead. But they that are after the spirit, the things of the spirit. Uh -huh. For to be carnally minded is death. Uh -huh. But to be spiritually minded is life and peace. It says to be carnally minded, which is you serving your flesh and doing whatever feels good and whatever you want to do. It says that is death. But to be spiritually minded is life and peace. Go ahead and read. Because the carnal mind is enmity against God. Why is that, brother? For it is not subject to the law of God. The carnal mind is not subject to the laws of God. Go ahead and read. Neither indeed can be. Go ahead. So then, they that are in the flesh. So if you operating in the flesh, you doing what you want to do. Go ahead and read. Cannot please God. You cannot please the Lord. And if you cannot please him, don't think you're going to do a Texas two-step and walk right on into the kingdom. It ain't happening. You're fooling yourself. Skip down, my brother, to verse 13 and continue. For if you live after the flesh, you shall die. Can you read that one more time, brother? For if you live after the flesh, you shall die. And we ain't talking about dying in this fleshly death. We talking about that damnation at the end. Because if you live according to your flesh, you live the life doing whatever you want to do. Mm -hmm. Go ahead and read. But if ye, uh -huh. through the Spirit, do modify the deeds of the body, uh -huh. ye shall live. So if you shut that flesh down, you will live. Go ahead and read. For as many as are led by the Spirit of God. Whoever is led by the Word of God, go ahead. They are the sons of God. You the children of the Lord. But if you living after what you want to do, then that's something else. And that's another lesson. We'll show you that if you keep coming on around here. But let's go to Genesis chapter 2. Let's go to Genesis 2. And let's see something that the Lord set up. Because Paul told you it is better that you get married than to burn. So let's go look at the Lord setting up this institution called marriage, which is being attacked on every side by society by people that say they church and by people that's in the church. Marriage is getting no respect, no honor, and it's being attacked. And nobody wants to deal with it. But let's look at it. Two and seven, my brother, go ahead and read. And the Lord God formed man of the dust of the ground uh -huh. and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life. So the man got, the Lord got the man from where? Well, from the dust of the ground. The, man, the Lord got the man from the dust of the ground. That's where he got him from. Go ahead and read. And man became a living soul. And he breathed the breath of life into that man. And that man became a living soul, which is the sum total of what that man is. Ain't no soul in him. He is a soul. Skip down to 15, my brother, and continue. And the Lord God took the man mm -hmm. and put him into the Garden of Eden to dress it and to keep it. So the Lord took that man and gave him some responsibility, gave him something to do. He gave him something to do. Y'all see that? Because too many times these young sisters out there picking these brothers ain't got nothing to do. No responsibilities. And I say it all the time. They want an Xbox and PlayStation all day. No responsibilities. Skip down to 18, my brother, and continue. And the Lord God said, mm -hmm. it is not good that the man should be alone. Mm -hmm. I will make him and help me for him. So, the, so, so who said that it's not good that man should be alone? The Lord. So the Lord said that, right? Mm -hmm. So now, skip down to verse 21 and continue. And the Lord God caused the deep sleep to fall upon Adam. Uh -huh. And he slept. And he took one of his ribs and closed up the flesh instead thereof. Uh -huh. And the rib which the Lord God had taken from man, made he a woman and brought her unto the man. So where did the woman come from? 
And where did the man come from? But the Lord could have went in the ground and got that woman too. But he went inside that man to show us something to bring that woman forth. Go ahead and read, brother. And Adam said, uh -huh. this is now bone of my bones. He said, now this woman is bone of my bones. Go ahead. And flesh of my flesh. And flesh of my flesh. Go ahead. She shall be called woman uh -huh. because she was taken out of man. Go ahead. Therefore shall a man leave his father and his mother. Yes. And shall cleave unto his wife. Mm -hmm. And they shall be one flesh. So he went into that man and took a rib and made that woman to show that man that you can't leave this woman. So when you get married, brothers, you can't leave your wife. And we're going to see later in this lesson that Jesus gave you one reason that you can do that. Any other reasons, you can't do it. Okay? She didn't feel like dancing with you. That ain't no reason. She burnt the macaroni and cheese. That ain't no reason to leave your woman. The Lord is going to tell us what that is. But we see right here that they are one flesh. Okay? So now... Let's go in Ecclesiastes chapter four, because God said that man needs to help me and that it's not good for him to be alone. Ecclesiastes chapter four, brother Todd, and let's pick it up at verse nine. Ecclesiastes four and nine, four and nine. Go ahead and read. Two are better than one because they have a good reward for their labor. Wait a minute. Two are better than one. Y'all see that? He said, it is not good that man should be alone. And he said, two is better than one. Go ahead and read. For if they fall, uh -huh. the one will lift up his fellow. For if one of them fall, the other one can lift you up. Go ahead and read. But woe to him that is alone when he falleth. Why? For he hath not another to help him up. And the Lord said, woe unto that person that's by themselves. Because ain't nobody else to help him to lift him back up. Go ahead and read. Again. Again. If two lie together, uh -huh. then they have heat. He said if two people lie together, they got some body heat right there. Go ahead and read. But how can one be warm alone? You got to wrap up in that blanket mm -hmm. real good, That's man. It. That's it. <laughs> Go ahead and read. And if one prevail against he, him. If one person... If, if uh, one prevail against that one person that's by himself, go ahead and read. Two shall withstand it. If he has some help, they can withstand that one person. Go ahead and read. And a threefold cord is not quickly broken. And a threefold cord is not quickly broken. So when you have two, it's almost like you got three. And those of us that have a spouse, we understand what that means. Mm -hmm. If one of them can't go get the kids, the other one can. Y'all understand what I'm saying? And the Lord gave this man a help me to help him take care of his business. So now let's stay and let's go back to Genesis chapter four, Genesis chapter four. Because what we saw back there in, in the second chapter of Genesis is God gave Adam that woman. Mm -hmm. And you can go in the third chapter and Adam even said, I was on. I said that woman you gave me. <laughs> OK. So the woman was given to him. Adam paid the diary with a rib and let's see if he going to go ahead and confirm this covenant four and one. Go ahead and read. And Adam knew Eve, his wife, uh -huh. and she conceived. OK, so now the, now the marriage is confirmed. Now, that's what they call today consummating the marriage. Mm -hmm. He just confirmed because he laid with her. The Lord had already gave the woman to him. OK, he paid a diary with that rib and then he laid with her. That's it. Go ahead and read. And bear Cain and said, uh -huh. I have gotten a man from the Lord. Mm -hmm. And she again bare his brother Abel. And Abel was a keeper of sheep, but Cain was a tiller of the ground. Skip down to uh, verse 25 and read that. And Adam knew his wife again. Mm -hmm. And she bare a son and called his name Seth. See, a lot of people don't know that, that, Cain, that Adam and Eve had a bunch of kids. They had sons and daughters. Go ahead and read. For God said she mm -hmm. have appointed me another seed instead of Abel, mm -hmm. whom Cain slew. Okay, so now let's go into the 24th chapter of Genesis and look at something. And let's see if this marriage looks similar to what happened back here with Adam and Eve. Genesis chapter 24. And this is uh, Abraham sending his servant to go find a wife for his son, Isaac. <clears throat> and let's see what this looks like. 24 and verse 1, my brother. 24 and 1. To, the title of today's lesson is, For It Is Better to Marry. 
Go ahead and read. And Abraham was old and well stricken in age. Mm -hmm. And the Lord had blessed Abraham in all things. Go ahead. And Abraham said unto his eldest servant of his house mm -hmm. that ruled over all that he had, put, I pray thee, thy hand under my thigh. Go ahead. And I will make thee swear by the Lord, the God of heaven mm -hmm. and the God of the earth, that thou shalt not take a wife unto my son of the daughters of the Canaanites among whom I dwell. Mm -hmm. But thou shalt go unto my country and to my kindred and take a wife unto my son Isaac. So, okay, so now Abraham got his servant, the one that's over all his stuff in his house. And he say, you're going to put your hand under my thigh and give me your word that you won't let my son marry a wife from among these children of Canaan. That you're going to go to my homeland, find somebody over there to marry my son. Now skip down to verse uh, 9, to verse 10, I'm sorry, and let's see what happened. Go ahead and read. And the servant took ten camels of the camels of his master mm -hmm. and departed. Go ahead. For all the goods of his master were in his hand. Mm -hmm. And he arose and went to Mesopotamia. Unto the city of Nahor. Yes. And he made his camels to kneel down without the city by well of water at the time of the evening. Even the time that the, that women go out to draw water. So now we see that we see in multiple places that the women in their dad's house, they take their dad's animals to the watering hole and water the animals. That's how Moses ran up on his wife. She brought mm -hmm. the animals out there. Okay. So now the man is at the well in this land. Go ahead and read. And he said. O Lord God of my master Abraham, I pray thee, send me good speed this day mm -hmm. and show kindness unto my master Abraham. Okay, so this man immediately, he starts praying to God. Now y'all check out how this man is praying. Go ahead and read. Behold, I stand here by the well of water uh -huh. and the daughters of the men of the city come out to draw water mm -hmm. and let it come to pass that the damsel to whom I shall say, let down thy pitcher. So he's praying to God. He said, Lord, look, I'm here to take care of Abraham's business, find a wife for his son. Let it be that the woman that comes up to this water hole, right? Mm -hmm. And I'm saying, I'm going to ask her for, for some water. Go ahead and read. I pray thee uh -huh. that I may drink, and mm -hmm. she shall say, uh -huh. drink, and I will give thy camels drink also. He said, the same woman that give me water and then offer some for my camels, go ahead and read. Let the same be she that thou has appointed for thy servant Isaac. Uh -huh. And thereby shall I know that thou has showed kindness unto my master. So he said, when that woman shows up, then I'll know that that's the one for my servant Isaac. So a lot of times we'll pray to God and we'll say, Lord, I don't know if I should go this way or go this way. Can you show me a sign? And dropping signs all around you. You don't know what, what's going on because you didn't vocalize and verbalize the sign that you're going to look for. Instead of saying something like, well, if you want me to take that job over there, my phone going to ring within the next hour. If my phone don't ring within the next hour, you don't want me taking that job. Just something simple like that. I mean, just something simple. I just do it all kind of ways. But you have to be real specific when you asking the Lord for something like this man was. And then you have to name the signs. So when when the sign come, you can identify it. And when it doesn't come, you identify it when it didn't show up. Then that way you helping the Lord help you out. This is just learning some on the way to learning mm -hmm. something. What verse was that, brother? That was the end of 14. Uh, skip down to verse 16 to continue. And the damsel was very fair to look upon, mm -hmm. a virgin. Neither had any man known her. And she went down to the well mm -hmm. and filled her pitcher and came up. Go ahead. And the servant ran to meet her and said, mm -hmm. let me, I pray thee, drink a little water of thy pitcher. So here she comes and he's asking her, can I get some water from your pitcher? Go ahead and read. And she said, drink, my Lord. Uh -huh. And she hasted and let down her pitcher upon her hand mm -hmm. and gave him drink. Go ahead. And when she had done giving him drink, she said, I will draw water for thy camels also uh -huh. until they have done drinking. Y'all see that? So right after she gave him some water, she offered some for the camel. And that let him know that she was the one. Skip down to 22 and continue. And it came to pass as the camels had done drinking that the man took a golden earring of half a shekel weight uh -huh. and two bracelets for her hands of 10 shekels weight of gold. So he starts giving his sister gold right out the gate. So he's paying a diary right there for Isaac. He's giving her something. 
He's not trying to invite her to a situation where uh, the man is, isn't in a position to provide for her. And he's showing her that right away. So now, skip down to verse 28 and continue. And the damsel ran and told them of her mother's house these things. Uh -huh. And Rebekah had a brother, and his name was Laban. Mm -hmm. And Laban ran out into the man and to the well. Go ahead. And it came to pass when he saw the earring and bracelets upon his sister's hands. And when he heard the words of Rebekah, his sister, saying, Thus spake the man unto me, mm -hmm. that he came unto the man. And behold, he stood by the camels at the well. Go ahead. And he said, Come in, thou blessed of the Lord. Mm -hmm. Wherefore standest thou without? For I have prepared the house and room for the camels. So now they invite the man to come on into the house. Skip down to 33 and continue. And there was set meat before him to eat. Mm -hmm. But he said, I will not eat until I have told mine errand. And he said, Speak on. So the man was pretty diligent about handling that business. He said, look, I appreciate the dinner. I'm not going to eat right now until I tell y'all why I came here. Right? Mm -hmm. So um, skip down. Well, go ahead and continue. And he said, I am Abraham's servant. Mm -hmm. And the Lord have blessed my master greatly. Mm -hmm. And he has become great. And he hath given him flocks mm -hmm. and herds and silver and gold and men servants and maid servants and camels and asses. So he's telling them that, hey, my servant got plenty of wealth. So skip on down to verse 49 and continue. And now, if you will deal kindly and truly with my master, yes. tell me. And if not, tell me. He said, look, if y'all going to give her to me, let me know. And if you're not going to give it to me, let me know that too. Go ahead and read. That I may turn to the right hand or um, to the left. Now skip down to 51 and continue. Behold, Rebecca is before thee. Take her and go and let her be thy master's son's wife. As the Lord has spoken. So now y'all see the family is giving her to Abraham's servant. It's like uh, when you go to these weddings, they say, is there anyone here to give this, this, this lady to this groom? And then somebody will say, yeah, you know, her, normally her dad would or whatever. And, it's, and I'm going to tell y'all something. It's a good thing even today. If you're going to marry a sister, go holler at her dad. It'll keep down a whole lot of problems later on down the road. If you went to her dad and, and talked to him and said, hey, you know, I want to marry your daughter, blah, blah, blah. Then uh, he'll have a little bit more respect for you. He'll probably have some expectations. And then as the as the one marrying the daughter, you'll probably remember you looked that man in his eyes and you shook his hand and told him you was going to treat his daughter right. So you'll have second and third thoughts about mistreating this sister. Mm -hmm. Because that's just a simple order of things. What verse was that, brother? That was the end of 51. Go ahead and read. And it came to pass uh -huh. that when Abraham's servant heard their words, mm -hmm. he worshiped the Lord, bowing himself to the earth. So right away, when the man saw that things were happening how he wanted them, he immediately went to thank the Lord. A lot of times we forget about that part. Mm -hmm. We only go to him when we need something, yeah, right? Yeah, right? When we're in trouble, we <laughs> fall on our knees and cry to the Lord. But when he give us some stuff and do some things and everything's working right, we just seem to forget about him. You only know him. When your head's getting ripped off. So now, what verse was that, Brother Todd? That was the end of 52. Go ahead and read. And the servant brought forth Jews of silver and Jews of gold and raiment uh -huh. and gave them to Rebecca. So now he's continuing to pay the diary. We see that she was already given to him. So they had that agreement part taken care of. And now the man is giving more diary. Go ahead and read. He gave also to her brother and to her mother precious things. Skip down to 55. And her brother and her mother said, let the dams abide with us a few days mm -hmm. at, the, at the least 10. Yes. After that, she shall go. Go ahead. And he said unto them, hinder me not. That servant said, no, partner. Mm -hmm. He said, please don't hinder me. I need to go right now. Go ahead and read. Seeing the Lord have prospered my way, mm -hmm. send me away that I may go to my master. Yes. And they said. We will call the damsel and inquire at her mouth. Go ahead. And they called Rebecca and said unto her. Will thou go with this man? Mm -hmm. And she said, I will go. So now you have the diary was paid. You have her given away. And then you have her agreeing to that. And ain't nobody laid with nobody yet. But now today, they lay first. And then they see if all that other stuff going to line up. Am I lying? Hmm. Then when the sister hook up with her with her girlfriends, now everybody in the same boat. Now y'all can comfortably complain about your man. 
Ain't that what they do when they get together? <laughs> Carlos ain't nothing. <laughs> but hey, you went there before vetting a brother. You doing it backwards. Check him out first. Bring him over here and see if he want to deal with your God before you marry him first. So now, that was what verse is that, Brother uh, 50? 58. Go ahead and read. And they sent away Rebekah, their sister, uh -huh. and her nurse, and Abraham's servant, and his men. So now, so the servant took her, and they're on their way back to Abraham's camp, and she sees Isaac as they approach the camp. Skip down to verse 64 and read that, brother. And Rebekah lifted up her eyes, and when she saw Isaac, she lighted off the camel. Okay, so clearly he must have been a good-looking brother, too. So skip down to 67 and continue. And Isaac brought her into his mother, Sarah's tent, uh -huh. and took Rebekah, uh -huh. and she became his wife. Yes. And he loved her, and Isaac was comforted after his mother's death. So y'all see that? So now the marriage was complete, because all that other stuff was taken mm -hmm. care of already. So now, so let's go into the 26th chapter. Let's go into the 26th chapter, my brother, and start at verse 1. We still with Isaac and Rebekah. 26 and 1. Go ahead and read. And there was a famine in the land. Uh-huh. Beside the first famine that was in the days of Abraham. Uh-huh. And Isaac went unto Abimelech, king of the Philistines, unto Gerar. Go ahead. And the Lord appeared unto him and said, Go not down into Egypt. Mm -hmm. Dwell in the land which I shall tell thee of. Go ahead. Sojourn in this land. So the Lord told Isaac, he said, stay in this land right here. Go ahead and read. And I will be with thee. He said, and I'll be with you. And will bless thee. And I will bless you. Go ahead and read. For unto thee and unto thy seed, I will give all these countries. Mm -hmm. And I will perform the oath which I swear unto Abraham thy father. Now skip down to verse 12 and continue. Then Isaac sold in that land mm -hmm. and received in the same year a hundredfold. He received in the same year what? A hundredfold. Go ahead. And the Lord blessed him. So the Lord did bless him because Proverbs 18 and 22 said when a man find a wife, he find what? And then he obtained what from the Lord? He obtained favor from the Lord. Does it look like Isaac got some favor right there? Yeah. If you get blessed a hundredfold in 12 months, that means whatever you have, you have a hundred times that. A year down the road. Man, I wish I could get some of that like right now. <laughs> so now, let's go into the 29th chapter. Genesis 29. And let's look at, the, and look at how Jacob got his wife. Because we saw the same thing that happened with Isaac and Rebekah. The same thing went down with Adam and Eve. There's an order to the thing. So, 29 and 10, my brother. 29 and verse 10. Go ahead and read. And it came to pass mm -hmm. when Jacob saw Rachel, the daughter of Laban, his mother's brother, mm -hmm. and the sheep of Laban, his mother's brother, mm -hmm. that Jacob went near and rolled the stone from the whale's mouth and watered the flock of Laban, his mother's brother. Go ahead. And Jacob kissed Rachel and lifted up his voice and wept. He kissed that sister and just saw her for the first time and started crying. Started crying, yeah. Can y'all imagine what she had to be like? <laughs> Go ahead and read, brother. And Jacob told Rachel mm -hmm. that he was her father's brother. Go ahead. And that he was Rebekah's son. And she ran and told her father. Skip down to 14 and continue. And Laban said to him, Surely thou art my bone and my flesh. Go ahead. And he abode within the space of a month. Uh -huh. And Laban said unto Jacob, Because thou art my brother, shouldest thou therefore serve me for naught? Mm -hmm. Tell me. What shall thy wages be? So Laban went to Jacob and said, okay, you're going to work for me. You're a relative of mine. What do you want in return for working for me? Go ahead and read. And Laban had two daughters. Mm -hmm. The name of the elder was Leah. Mm -hmm. And the name of the younger was Rachel. So his oldest daughter's name was Leah. The youngest daughter's name was Rachel. Go ahead and read. Leah was tender-eyed. Mm -hmm. But Rachel was beautiful and well-favored. Clearly. Go ahead and read. And Jacob loves Rachel and said, I will serve thee seven years for Rachel, thy younger daughter. He said, okay, then that's what I want. I want my wages to be your youngest daughter, Rachel, and I'll work for you for seven years for her. Okay? So now, let's see what happened. Skip down to verse 20 and go ahead and read. And Jacob served seven years for Rachel, mm -hmm. and they seemed unto him but a few days. 
for the love he had to her. So he did that. He worked for the seven years. Go ahead and read. And Jacob said unto Laban, give me my wife. He said, give me what? Give me my wife for my days are fulfilled. Shouldn't he have said, give me Rachel? I would have been saying, give me Rachel. Because that's who I worked for. And I would have stood right there till he brought her. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Y'all know how you wait on your money and then you count it when you get there. Right. Bring, yeah. bring me Rachel. <laughs> and I'm going to stay right here. But go ahead and read. For my days are fulfilled. Yes. That I may go in unto her. Go ahead. That and he may do what? That I may go in unto her. Y'all see that? So because when he lay with her, that solidified because all the other stuff was taken care of up front. Go ahead and read. And labor gathered. Together all the men of the place and made a feast. So they had a big wedding feast. Go ahead and read. And it came to pass in the evening mm -hmm. that he took Leah, his daughter, mm -hmm. and brought her to him. And he went in unto her. Wait a minute. I thought he worked for Rachel. He did. But he brought his oldest daughter, Leah. Mm -hmm. Go ahead and read. And Laban gave unto his daughter, Leah. Zilpah his maid for a handmaid. Go ahead. And it came to pass that in the morning, mm -hmm. behold, it was Leah. And he said to Laban, mm -hmm. what is this thou hast done unto me? Uh -huh. Did not I serve with thee for Rachel? See, that's why you have to be specific sometimes. Mm -hmm. Give me my wife. <laughs> no, give me Rachel. Mm -hmm. But he said, hey, you, you basically, you deceived me. Go ahead and read. Wherefore then hast thou beguiled me? Go ahead. And Laban said. Now look at Laban's reason for doing that, y'all. Check out his reason. What did he say, brother? It must not be so done in our country. He said, we can't do this in our country. Go ahead. To give the younger. To give the younger. Before the firstborn. Y'all see that? He said, we can't break customs, man. Go ahead and read. Fulfill her week. Uh-huh. And we will give thee this also for the service, which thou shalt serve me yet seven other years. So he said, if you work for seven more years, then I'll give you Rachel. Go ahead and read. And Jacob did so uh -huh. and fulfilled her week. And he gave him Rachel, his daughter, the wife also. Skip down to 30 and continue. And he went in also unto Rachel. And that and that would uh, solidify the contract. Go ahead. And he loved also Rachel more than Leah uh -huh. and served with him yet seven other years. Y'all see that? But see, the diary got paid by him working. She was given to him. And clearly there was an agreement there. And then he laid with her and it was done. So now let's go into uh, Proverbs chapter three, because Laban told Jacob that, hey, we can't do this in our country, man, to give away my youngest daughter, my uh, youngest daughter before I marry off my oldest daughter. You can't do it. So let's go to Proverbs three and, and pick it up at the first verse. Proverbs 3 and 1. Proverbs 3 and 1. Go ahead and read, brother. My son, mm -hmm. forget not my law, mm -hmm. but let thine heart keep my commandments. Go ahead. For length of days and long life and peace shall they add to thee. Uh -huh. Let not mercy and truth forsake thee. Bind them about thy neck. Go ahead. Write them upon the table of thine heart. Uh -huh. So shall thou find favor. And good understanding in the sight of God and man. So that's what kind of like what Jacob was dealing with. He was dealing with having to do things right in the eyes of the Lord and in the eyes of the people. He had to go by what God say. And then he had to deal with the customs of the land. Otherwise, he probably would have wanted to do some boxing out there with that man. Mm. But he had to <laughs> he had to respect that. So now let's go into uh, Ephesians chapter five. And a lot of times, it's just like uh, today, if you're not right in the eyes of man, a lot of times they don't want to hear you. You know how you, you get these people that's shacking together, as they call it. Mm -hmm. And then you try to go across the street and tell your neighbors who married, you trying to tell them something about the Bible. They'll be like, man, you got a beam in your eye and you worry about the mold in mine. Go handle your business, then come back and talk to me. So how you going to talk to somebody and you not doing stuff right? Go get your act together and then come talk to me. Ephesians chapter 5, my brother. And let's pick it up at verse 1. 5 and 1. Go ahead and read. Be ye therefore followers of God. Yes. As dear children. Yes. And walk in love mm -hmm. as Christ also have loved us. Yes. And have given himself for us mm -hmm. an offering and a sacrifice to God for a sweet smelling Savior. Yes. 
but fornication and all uncleanness or covetousness. Let it not be once named among you as becometh saints. Skip down to five and continue. For this ye know that no whoremonger, mm -hmm. nor unclean person. He said no whoremonger. See, what people don't understand is if you jumping around from bed to bed, that's whoremongering. Go ahead and read. Nor covetous man uh -huh. who is an, an idolater have any inheritance. And, and the whoremongers on that list, you don't have any inheritance. Go ahead. In the kingdom of Christ and of God. Do y'all see that? You have no inheritance, brothers and sisters, if that's what you are doing. Skip down to nine and continue. For the fruit of the Spirit is in all goodness and righteousness and truth. Yes. Proving what is acceptable unto the Lord. And we love to prove what's acceptable to the Lord. That's why we read so much in here. Skip down to verse uh, 20, my brother. And let's get some house rules. If you do take Paul's advice and go ahead and marry instead of getting burned and you marry somebody, let's look at the house rules. 5 and 20. Go ahead and read. Giving thanks always for all things unto God uh -huh. and the Father in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Go ahead. Submitting yourselves one to another in the fear of God. See, that's for the husband and the wife. They are both supposed to submit themselves one to another in the fear of God. Being scared that if I don't handle my spouse right, the Lord is going to do something real awful to me. Go ahead and read. Wives. Wives. Submit yourselves unto your own husband. Yes. As unto the Lord. It says, now some wives might not want to hear that. <laughs> it says, submit yourselves unto your husbands as you would unto the Lord. I didn't write that. Go ahead and read. For the husband. For the husband is the head of the wife. Go ahead and read. Even as Christ is the head of the church. Uh huh. And he is the savior of the body. Go ahead. Therefore, as the church is subject unto Christ. He said, therefore, just like the church is subject unto Christ. Go ahead and read. So let the wives be to their own husbands. So let the wives be subject to her own husband. Go ahead. In everything. In something. Everything. Just on the weekend. Everything. In everything. The wife will be subject to her husband. Go ahead and read. Now, this is something for you husbands. Listen up. Go ahead and read. Husbands, uh -huh. love your wives, even as Christ also loved the church uh -huh. and gave himself for it. Now, that's a tall order right there, brothers, but it's written. You have to love that woman and be willing to give yourself up for her. Now, skip down to 28 and continue. So are men to love their wives as their own body. He say men supposed to love his wife like she's his own body. But we read that Eve come from Adam's rib. Didn't we read mm -hmm. that? You supposed to love your wife like she's the skin on your arm. Go ahead and read, brother. He that loveth his wife. The man that loveth his wife. Loveth himself. He's just loving himself. Go ahead and read. For no man ever yet hated his own flesh. Y'all know anybody that hate themselves? Y'all know any men that hate themselves? No. Nor his own flesh. Go ahead and read. But nourish. But he nourish it. And cherish it. Uh-huh. Even as the law of the church. Skip down to 31 and continue. For this cause shall a man leave his father and mother. And we've read that already. A man supposed to leave his father and his mother. Go ahead and read. And shall be joined unto his wife. Yes. And they too shall be one flesh. The man need to get out of his mom and dad's house. And he also need to keep mom and dad out of his business. And the wife need to keep mom and dad out of her business with her husband. Because every time your parents going to buy us up on your side when you and the spouse have a conflict. Am I right? When a daughter go to her parents and say, well, you know, well, Daryl is doing this here. And he said that. Now the parents got a problem with Daryl. <laughs> right? But you're going to go right on back home and make up with Daryl an hour later. <laughs> then, you, then you and Daryl going to go over there next week and, and the whole family looking upside Daryl's head. Because <laughs> you're going to put them in your business. Don't put them in your business. Brothers or sisters, keep that stuff in your house, okay? So now, what verse was that, brother? That was 31. Were we through with 31? Yeah, we're done with it. Skip down to 33, because right now we're looking at the two ingredients that's going to make your marriage sustain itself and work. You don't need but two ingredients, just two. Read them, brother. Nevertheless, uh -huh. let every one of you in particular so love his wife even as himself. The man, here's your job. 
Love your wife like she's you. That's part number one for the successful marriage. Go ahead and read. And the wife. And the woman. See that she reverence her husband. And the woman, you just reverence your husband. The man loving his wife, the woman reverencing her husband. What kind of problems could you have, brother? None. Shouldn't have no problems. Okay? So now, let's go into the Songs of Solomon chapter 4. Because that man is supposed to be loving his wife. Like she's his own flesh. You can love her in, in deed. And sometimes you can love her in words. Like we getting ready to read right here. Where the Lord. Was through Solomon's pen. Talking about Israel. The church. Mm -hmm. His wife. And let's see how he talks to his wife. Song of Solomon chapter 4 my brother. And let's start at the first verse. Verse 1. Song of Solomon. 4 and 1. Go ahead and read. Behold, uh -huh. thou art fair, my love. Y'all see how the Lord talking to this woman? He says, behold, thou art fair, my love. Go ahead and read. Behold, uh -huh. thou art fair. Uh -huh. Thou hast dove's eyes within thy locks. You got dove's eyes within your locks. Go ahead and read. Thy hair is as a flock of goats mm -hmm. that appear from Mount Gilead. Skip down to three and continue. Thy lips or like a thread of scarlet. I wish, I wish Brother Todd could read that like he's uh, Errol Flynn or somebody. <laughs> For effect. <laughs> he said, thy lips are like a thread of scarlet. Go ahead and read, brother. And thy speech is coming. Uh-huh. Thy temples are like a piece of pomegranate within thy locks. Skip down to verse 5 and continue. Thy two breasts are like two young rows that are twins, mm -hmm. which feed among the lilies. Ooh, we skip down to verse 7 and continue. Thou art all fair, my love. He said, thou art all fair, my love. Go ahead. There is no spot in thee. You don't have one flaw. That's how that man should be talking to his wife. Skip down to verse 9 and continue. Thou hast ravished my heart, my sister, my spouse. Thou hast ravished my heart, my sister, my spouse. Go ahead and read. Thou hast ravished my heart with one of thine eyes. With just one of your eyes you ravished my heart. <laughs> Go ahead and read. With one chain of thy neck. Uh-huh. How fair is thy love, my sister, my spouse. How fair is thy love, my sister, my spouse. Y'all, y'all, I was looking over this lesson the other day, and I just got up and went in there with my wife. Up. I said, my love, my sister, <laughs> my spouse. She said, what you up to, man? <laughs> then I said, you're my love, my sister, my spouse. She said, no, nah, partner. <laughs> say, what you up to, man? No, nah, partner. <laughs> But I guess if I would have started talking like that a long time ago, mm -hmm. she wouldn't be suspicious. <laughs> like, you trying to go buy something. <laughs> you know what I mean? But go ahead and finish that, bro. Middle of team. Uh-huh. How much better is thy love than wine? Yes. And the smell of thine ointments than all spices. Yes, go ahead. Thy lips, oh my spouse, drop as the honeycomb. He talking real sweet to his woman, ain't he? He said, your lips, oh my spouse, drop as a honeycomb. Go ahead, brother. Honey and milk yes. are under thy tongue, mm -hmm. and the smell of thy garments is like the smell of Lebanon. So now let's go to Genesis. I just wanted to show y'all that, hey, you can love your woman in words and deed as well. Y'all hear what I'm saying? But, uh, but we read back there in Ephesians that the woman is supposed to reverence her husband. So we're going to Genesis 3. Genesis, we're going back to the beginning. Because Paul didn't make that up. Genesis 3, we just want one verse, verse 16, because the Lord was handing out sentences right here. He was handing out the punishment for them for sinning, okay? Let's see what he said to this sister. Genesis 3 and 16, go ahead and read. Unto the woman, he said, mm -hmm. I will greatly multiply thy sorrow and thy conception. Now look, this was at the very beginning. Go ahead and read. In sorrow, thou shalt bring forth children. He told the woman, in sorrow, you're going to bring forth children. Now, did the Lord say that? The Lord said that, right? Mm -hmm. Do the women still bring forth children in sorrow? Mm -hmm. It's still a painful thing, right? Then let's see if this other part of this verse is still good today. Go ahead and read, brother. 
and thy desire shall be to thy husband, uh -huh. and he shall rule over thee. Well, well, well wait a minute, Brother James. Things has <laughs> <is> changed. <laughs> Y'all see that? <laughs> but hold on. You still bring forth the children in sorrow. Mm -hmm. The husband's still supposed to run his house. Right? That's it. So now, we re th this is like the second time we've read this. But let's go to 1 Corinthians chapter 11. 1 Corinthians 11. And I say it all the time to a sister, if you don't ever want no man running your house, then stay single. Don't get married. But at the same time, that means you can't be crossing the mother lines either. Because if you do, the Lord expects you to marry somebody you're going to lay down with. That's what he expects. And we read this stuff. First Corinthians 11. Let's pick it up at three. My brother, go ahead and read. But I would have you know mm -hmm. that the head of every man is Christ. Yes. And the head of the woman is man. So the head of the woman is who? Is the man. Go ahead. And the head of Christ is God. Go ahead. Every man praying or prophesying, having his head covered, dishonoring his head. That's why every time a man is praying or dealing with the word of God, his head is supposed to be uncovered. Go ahead and read. But every woman that prayeth or prophesied with her head uncovered, uh -huh. dishonoreth her head. Go ahead. For that is even all one as if she were shaved. And that's why we re require sisters when they come in here to cover their heads up. Because if they didn't, they would be dishonoring the Lord if they didn't do that. And there are other reasons. Go ahead and read. For if the woman be not covered, uh -huh. let her also be shown. Mm -hmm. But if it be a shame for a woman to be shown or shaven, let her be covered. Go ahead. For a man indeed ought not to cover his head. Why? For as much as he is the image and glory of God. They say the man shouldn't cover his head because he is the image and the glory of God. Go ahead and read. But the woman. But the woman. Is the glory of the man. But the woman is the glory of the man. Go ahead and read. For the man. Is not of the woman. That's right. But the woman of the man. Go ahead. Neither was the man created for the woman. Uh huh. But the woman for the man. We read where the Lord said it's not good that man should be alone. I'm going to make him and help me. And we read right here that the woman was made for the man. Go ahead and read. For this cause of the Wait woman. Wait a minute. Did you read verse 9? I did. Go ahead. For this cause uh -huh. ought the woman to have power on her head because of the angels. So that's power on your head, sister. That's protection on your head. Because of the angels, it said. When Satan got kicked out of heaven, y'all, one third of all the angels came down with him. And they down here right now handling business. Okay? You mess around and you praying and your head ain't covered. You welcome them. You welcoming them to come and deal with you. OK, so have your protection, because when Eve was right there in the third chapter of Genesis, Satan approached her. Her cover, which is her man, was not there. Because if you go to Genesis three, I'm going to just flip that myself. It says now the serpent was more subtle. Verse two, it says uh, it says verse one, it says. And the serpent was more subtle than any beast of the field, which the Lord God had made. Go ahead and read that Genesis 3, my brother Todd. 3 and 1 and 2, what did it say? Now the serpent was more subtle than any beast of the field, uh -huh. which the Lord God had made. Mm -hmm. And he said unto the woman. He said unto who? Unto the woman. It didn't say he said to them. He said to the woman because her cover wasn't there. Go ahead and read. Yeah, have God said, ye shall not eat of every tree of the garden. Mm -hmm. And the woman said unto the it, serpent. It didn't say, and they said to the serpent. The woman the said woman. to the serpent. Go ahead. We may eat of the fruit of the trees of the garden. Uh huh. But of the fruit of the tree, which is in the midst of the garden. Mm -hmm. God have said, you shall not eat of it. Neither shall you touch it, lest she die. But what did the serpent say? What did Satan say? And the sa serpent said unto the woman, uh -huh. You shall not surely die. Is Eve dead? Is Eve dead right now? Mm -hmm. So Satan lied right there. The woman died. So, but her cover wasn't there. And them head coverings represent your cover and your protection sisters. That's why we want you to wear it because we can read this kind of stuff in here. So if you praying at home, sisters, cover your head up. You reading your Bible, cover your head up. The minute you start dealing spiritually, cover your head up. Okay? And I'm talking ministry and music as well. So now, 
Let's go into 1 Timothy 5 because, yes, we keep reading that the man is the head. And we keep reading that the woman should reverence that man. But with that comes some responsibilities. 1 Timothy 5, my brother. Let's just read one verse, verse 8. 5 and 8. 1 Timothy 5 and 8. Go ahead and read. But if any provide not for his own. It said, but if any provide not for his own, go ahead. And especially for those of his own house. And especially for those that live in his own house, go ahead. He have denied the faith. He have denied the faith. And is worse than an infidel. And he's worse than an infidel. So now, let's go into 1 Peter chapter 3. Because, yeah, you have that position, but some responsibilities come with that. So now, let's go into 1 Peter chapter 3. And we just want one verse right there. 1 Peter 3. And we're going to pick it up at verse 7. So we see that the man is the head of the house. And responsibilities comes with that. And he also has to treat that sister the right way. 3 and 7, my brother. 1 Peter chapter 3, verse 7. Go ahead and read. Likewise, ye husbands, mm -hmm. dwell with them according to knowledge, mm -hmm. giving honor unto the wife. It said, dwell with your wife according to some knowledge. Not about what Lil Pete and them said, but according to knowledge. Go ahead and read. Giving honor unto the wife. Giving honor to your wife. Go ahead. As unto the weaker vessel. As she is the weaker vessel. Go ahead. And as being heirs together of the grace of life. Why is that? That your prayers be not hindered. So if you mistreating your wife, your prayers can get hindered, brothers. Y'all see that? Mm -hmm. If you mistreating her, don't expect your prayers to get heard. So now, but we're going to come in, we're going to run into that later on. But let's go into Colossians, the third chapter. So you have to give honor to your wife as the weaker vessel. And if you don't, the Lord ain't going to hear your prayers, brother. Colossians 3, verse 18. 3 and 18, my brother. 3 and 18. Go ahead and read. Wives, uh -huh. submit yourselves unto your own husband uh -huh. as it is fit in the Lord. It says, wives, submit yourselves to your husband as it is, as it is, as it is fit. Go ahead and read. Husbands, uh -huh. love your wives and be not bitter against them. Mm -hmm. Children, obey your parents in all things. Y'all see that? Children, obey your parents in all things. Go ahead and read. For this is well pleasing uh -huh. unto the Lord. Go ahead. Father, uh -huh. provoke not your children to anger, uh -huh. lest they be discouraged. So now we got house rules for everybody. So now. Let's go into uh, Acts chapter 4 because we have to look at something and we, we going back to the man being the head. And that's why the sisters have to be real careful of who they choose to be with. Because that man will have you off doing some stuff and getting you in trouble. Especially if he don't serve the God you serve, he'll have you over there at the, at the Mount Olive Baptist <laughs> AME, mm -hmm. Holy Spirit, jump up and down Baptist Church. Where they don't teach nothing, they just pick your pocket clean. Read your one verse and send you home. Acts chapter 4. We're going to set the groundwork for something right here. Acts chapter 4, my brother. Let's pick it up at verse 32. 4 and 32. Go ahead and read. And the multitude of them that believed were of one heart and uh -huh. of one soul. Uh -huh. Neither said any of them that all of the things which he possessed was his own. Mm -hmm. But they had all things common. Mm -hmm. And with great power gave the apostles witness of the resurrection of the Lord Jesus. Mm -hmm. And great grace was upon them all. Go ahead. Neither was there any among them that lacked. Mm -hmm. For as many as were possessors of lands. Our houses sold them mm -hmm. and brought the prices of the things that were sold. They brought the price of what? Of the things that were sold. Okay, so now you had the apostles dealing with the word and dealing with the believers. And a lot of the believers had uh, 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 um, possessions, things that were, had value. They had land. I would presume homes, farms, whatever. So they went and started selling their stuff and bringing their money to the apostles. What verse was that, brother? That was in the 34. Go ahead and read. And laid them down at the apostles' feet. Uh -huh. And distribution was made unto every man according as he had need. So what they did was they just brought all the money that they got from selling their stuff. Then the apostles could distribute it to people who had 
needs in whatever area. Skip down to 37 and continue. Having land, sold it, and brought the money and uh -huh. laid it at the apostles' feet. Okay, so whatever they had, whatever price they sold it for, we read that in verse 34, they brought that. If they sold it for 30 pieces of silver, they brought and gave the apostles 30 pieces of silver. Okay? So now let's go into 35 and look at Ananias. I mean, in, in, I'm sorry, in uh, Acts chapter 5 and pick it up at verse 1. Five and one. Go ahead and read. But a certain man named Ananias mm -hmm. with Sapphira, his wife, uh -huh. sold a possession. So now Ananias and his wife sold a possession. Go ahead and read. And kept back part of the price. Uh oh They kept back part of the money. Go ahead and read. His wife also being privy to it. So his wife was aware that he was going to try to pull the okie doke on Peter. She knew about it. Go ahead and read. And brought a certain part. And laid it at the apostles' feet. Go ahead and read. But Peter said, Ananias, why has Satan filled thine heart to lie to the Holy Ghost? Uh -huh. And to keep back part of the price of the land. Y'all see that? Peter said, man, why have you let Satan fill your heart to lie to the Holy Ghost? And to keep back part of that money. When the word was, whatever you sold it for, that's what you was going to bring. Go ahead and read. Whilst it remained, was it not thine own? He said, that was your stuff. Go ahead and read. And now there was souls. Was it not in thine own power? Uh-huh. Why hast thou conceived this thing in thine heart? Go ahead. Thou hast not lied unto men, but unto God. Y'all see that? But, but, but when that man came, he was talking to Peter and those apostles. That's why I tell people, hey, you know, you, 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 you go to people in the name of the Lord and you talking to them and and then they'll say, oh, yeah, well, you know what? I'm going I'm to come, come by the church next week. And then you don't see them. Y'all hear what I'm saying? See, the people don't understand. They wasn't just standing there talking to you. Y'all understand what I'm saying? Or you say, well, I'm going to come over here and do this. Or I'll be over there and do that. Hey, you just wasn't talking to me. Because we talking about church business. And we talking in the name of the Lord. And you said you was going to do that. And I wasn't the only one that heard you. Brother Todd wasn't the only one that heard you. The Lord was listening to you. Go ahead and read, brother. And then the nice, mm -hmm. hearing these words, fell down. And as soon as Peter said that, he fell down. Go ahead and read. And gave up the ghost. And he died. Go ahead. And great fear came on all of them that heard these things. And great fear should come on everybody that heard about that. Go ahead and read. And the young men arose, wound him up, and mm. carried him out and buried him. Go ahead. And it was about the space of three hours after uh -huh. when his wife, not knowing what was done, came in. So three hours later, here comes his wife. She don't know that he's dead, but she's aware of the game they played. She bought into it. Go ahead and read. And Peter answered unto her, uh -huh. tell me whether you sold the land for so much. Uh -huh. And she said, yeah, for so much. So Peter say, tell me, sister, did y'all just sell this land for five pieces of silver? And she said, whatever it was. And she said, yeah, that's how much we sold it for. She was trying to say, well, yeah, that was what we said at home. Yeah, we were going to say five. Go ahead and read. Then Peter said unto her, "Uh huh. how is it that you have agreed together to tempt the spirit of the Lord? Do y'all see that? Peter said, why is it and how is it? Did you have agreed together to tempt the spirit of the Lord? So you thought you were just talking to men. Hmm. Go ahead and read. Behold. Behold. The feet of them which have buried thy husband. He said, oh, same cats that buried your husband. Oh, Go ahead and read. Are at the door. Uh-huh. And shall carry thee out. Go ahead. Then fell she down straightway at his feet. Uh -huh. And yielded up the goat. Go ahead. And the young men came in and found her dead. And carrying her forth, buried her by her husband. Do y'all see that? So, yeah, you supposed to reverence your husband, but the minute he gets you to try to mm. cross God, that's when you probably have to draw that line yeah. right there. Say, yeah. say no, nah, husband, <laughs> I can't agree with you on that one. You have to do that one by yourself. Father. You got to do that one on your own. So now, let's go into uh, Ezekiel chapter 18. See, that's where you have to draw the line when your husband...